Hello, uh, long time no see, people, and welcome back to this new project that I'm making. I believe this is the second video of it that I'm recording. But anyway, today I would like to review what this game is gonna be about and what I've been working on in the past week or so. So this little crab guy. Uh, he's not actually based on the crap. He's not based on anything. I kind of just designed this robot based on the stuff he does, which is picking things up. And speaking of picking things up, uh, this game uh, is currently named Project Scavenge or Project Scavenger, whatever. So let me explain the basic premise of this game. So. Basically, you are in a procedurally generated maze. So if I hold tab, it will show a minimap. It doesn't actually show how it's arranged. It just show roughly where every cell is. But you want to go. So basically, you are traveling around in space and you have very limited amount of energy as a fuel source for your ship. Uh, the, my laptop fan is probably very loud right now, so apologize for that. Uh, so you are ba you basically really need resource, you need energy for your ship, so you want to stop at this kind of space ruins, uh, space labyrinth to look for uh, stuff that could potentially contain uh, energies such as this gizmo, this propeller actually contains some uh, and the most prominent source of energy will be batteries which will be scattered throughout the maze way more often than this kind of utility ones but uh, the thing is this utility kind of gizmo will actually help you traverse the maze and it will actually help you traver traverse deeper and help you explore deeper part of the maze. So that's the basic premise. And what you want to do is after you scavenge some energy, you want to go back to where your ship is and then proceed to the next uh, labyrinth, so to speak. And that's the basic premise. So, hence the name Project Scavenge. You are scavenging for resources, for energies. So, what I'm doing is I'm gonna, I guess, do a tiny walkthrough of uh, this thing. So, this is supposed to be an item room that's gonna contain good stuff, but I haven't configured that yet. Sometimes stuff show up, but usually it doesn't. <laughs> Currently, but... That's because it's still very early on in development. So we're gonna just keep going. And this is a room that's designed to be traversed around using a propeller, so I guess the generation makes sense. So now we have two of this. This part, uh this is this uh, this thing on the podium is a rocket. Uh I think all of the gizmos I've already shown in the first video, so I'm not gonna talk about it way too much, but they're kind of generating in a huge abundance right now, which isn't gonna be the case in the future. Uh, in the future, I want it to be just more batteries and more resource, more energies. But right now, it's generating a lot of cool gizmos, which is fun. So I can traverse around in more neat ways. So the thing is, the thing with this maze generation is. The further you go into the dungeon, there's gonna be more rooms like this that's like specifically designed for you to use one of the gizmos to traverse. And this rooms this kind of room will start generating if the said gizmo has already generated and can be found where you are able to reach it. And yeah. I think this idea came initially came from when I want to make 
some kind of blend between a uh, metroidvania and a roguelike where the metroidvania map is like procedurally generated and even the progression of it is also like randomized but uh my ideas kind of change and mutate a lot into whatever this is right now so you can see it still has the remains of that uh metroidvania kind of uh map structure i guess but it's like it's not as like strict like you can allow this kind of room for, for instance this room is like designed for the propeller but you can kind of i guess you could also use a a grappling hook for it like i will go into for now, the game only has rooms designed for the propeller, but there's gonna be more for each gizmo. And the thing with this is, the interesting thing with this is I have no ideas what kind of gizmo can solve what kind of rooms. And because every kind of gizmo gives you a huge, like, help in terms of movement ability for example this is a wagon it just helps you get across clips easier so oh yeah we're in a, we're in a pretty identical room to the last one and this the thing is broken but whatever basically i have no idea how the players are going to traverse this but that's the part of the fun you see, it's kind of become some kind of immersive scene, so to speak. So it's cool. This kind of map design is nice. Ugh, can I get that? No, I I died. <laughs> so yeah, let's generate another room. So this, the structure of this maze is more uh, scarce. More scattered but uh, in the future I want more maze to be like I guess at least three times larger than the maze that I, the game currently generates and way more involved like I don't want it to be more scattered I want it to be more interconnected like occasionally I can connect them and yeah I believe I have Oh yeah, there was another room that was designed for the propeller, but I don't have one right now. So yeah, the procedure generation is kind of still very bare bones. It's incomplete right now, but right now it has a basic... You can see the basic concept of it. Right, this past week I've been just working on getting this prototype done. So I hadn't revealed it in the... I hadn't revealed what I was the main thing I want to do with this game yet because I wasn't so sure whether I want to go on with it because I don't know it's such a weird idea scavenging for stuff I guess I guess this whole company also does this but I don't know how fun it's gonna be especially that this concept will probably very be impacted a lot by how good the procedure generation is which is something I never really tackled. So it's why I'm even making this in the first place, so I can uh, get a feel of what it feels like to make procedurally generated stuff. I'm stuck. I'm stuck again. So yeah, basically I'm making it just to see, just to have fun with, you know, algorithmic stuff and uh, if I want to make handmade, oh fuck! If I want to make handmade levels, I think I'm gonna keep working on Froggles Adventure, and which, by the way, I'm I've been brainstorming uh, a story for the sequel. Cause uh, right now a lot of the stories for Froggle is just he wants he needs to get a MacGuffin, and I don't think that's interesting enough. So. I have ideas for 
uh, either the stories and the new mechanics is gonna have. And boy, I cannot wait because I want to do a lot more stuff with the overworld and level interactions. Which I have done a huge lot in Frogos and Grapple, but in Frogos Adventure I didn't have the time, so I just. Uh, I had a level select screen and that's it. But in Frogos Adventure 2, I want like a proper overworld map. And I want more fun, I want to do more fun stuff with it, but. I digress. Uh, this is a video about Project Scavenge. And I guess I don't really have anything else to talk about. I guess uh, tell me what you think about this game idea I have. Uh, I'm excited for it, been thinking about it non stop. And I wanna keep working on it, but I've been quite busy. I'm gonna get quite busy in the next two to three weeks or so because. It's near the end of the semester, I need to fix this room. <laughs> it's near the end of the semester and I'm getting busy, like I have term project and stuff that I have to work on. So I cannot really focus on making this game that much. So yeah. So I guess the next update video is not gonna be soon, it's gonna be... I guess it will roughly be just like the same amount of time between this one and the last one. But anyway, god damn it, I'm horrendous at platforming. I guess when I made this, I, it wasn't really tested, so I guess my fault. But anyway. Uh, anyway, that has been... Uh, all the time I have for this video and I'll see you in the next update video. Peace.